it's very much in the spirit of interfaith dialogue that um, uh, they have an atheist uh, introducing a preacher. So uh, I'm very, very pleased to be able to introduce you uh, to the next speaker, uh, Daniel Neusch from Switzerland. And uh, judging by uh, his record so far, here's someone who is very committed and prepared to spend his time uh, really working. Uh, he's got a certificate four in ministry from the Pastoral Leadership College, uh, which is in Sydney, Australia. Uh, he's uh, a project manager at the, at the Campus Crusade for Christ, where he preaches and organizes youth meetings. Uh, he's been a scout leader for five years and is part of the leadership team for the youth ministry at this ICF church in Zurich. So he's a busy guy, and we would hope that he's someone who is using his passion and enthusiasm and dedication to preach uh, peace and to create a, a, an environment where uh, interfaith really can work between people of all kinds of faith and none at all. So uh, please welcome Daniel Neusch. Thank you. Quick call and point to all of you. Uh, there's some amazing speakers. The problem is everyone runs over is we won't get time for everyone to speak and we won't get time for you guys to speak from the floor. So if the speakers can, can do their job in the time, that'd be brilliant because we could let you all speak forever, but we want as many people as possible to actually express themselves. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, well, that's my, my role. Uh, in church, normally they have very strict five minutes, it's five minutes, one minute, too long is uh, not good, they walk out. So, um, no, my message is a message of peace. So I'm very glad to be here. Thank you for the honor to let me speak to you. You know, this question of interfaith dialogue has been uh, with us for, for many, many, many years, for maybe for the whole existence of life. How do we rise, rise above the challenges of fundamental faith difference to come together in an effective dialogue, interfaith dialogue and harmony? How do we prevent war in the name of religion without forsaking our personal belief or being culprit to fear and persecution in order to respect one another? How do we encourage our leaders to rise up and commit to peace amongst nations? I believe two aspects are very important in that on that journey to, um, to find a solution. And um, I have spent, uh, I've grown up in Switzerland as a Christian, and uh, I spent a couple of months in Cairo, so I got to know other religions. I got to know Muslim firsthand, and this was so good for me, because one of the things that really divides us is fear, and we are afraid of what we don't know. And if we don't know it, then we are afraid of it, and we put like this wall. So one of my first point is, that we, we need to again establish freedom of speech and thought in religious education. It was already, they, they talked about it just briefly, about education. Education is so important. The existing right of freedom of speech and thought in religious education in recent years has suffered, or in some countries may have never been really established. All nations should really respect and honor this valuable right of education. We need to be educated in different belief systems and we need to have the freedom to choose what we want to believe. I think that's about one of the very important um, points. In order to give everybody a chance to choose for themselves, people need to know what there is out there. Educators should uh, not be banned from teaching on any religious any religion or any faith, since it is such an essential part of our, our society and has been with us and has been shaping society for years. We should not be afraid as well for standing for our faith. We should not be afraid to live it out, but we also should not be afraid to be exposed to other faiths, to other religion, because we can learn from it, because we, uh, this brings down the walls and it brings peace. The freedom of expressing our thoughts and beliefs and the wide religious education, I believe, enables us to make a step towards each other, which is such an indispensable basis for work toward a better world where we appreciate each other. As I said, fear is really a hindrance, and I think fear builds walls instead of bridges. And we've got to build bridges without forsaking our personal belief, but because we know it with the other person. We make a step towards each other. 
You know, I like this, this picture of a, of, a, of a tree. If a tree is really has deep roots, the branches can reach out very far and can help others. It doesn't need to be afraid, to, like, it can reach out to others. And I believe it's the same is when we have deep roots in our personal conviction, we can reach out to others and help others. I want to just end on that little note of love and respect. You know, when we have established this freedom of speech and thought in religious education, then we need to have the right attitude, how we deal with it, how we talk with each other. And I liked the session before when we talked about dignity. And I think one of the important things is love and respect. And I know we haven't always been good. But I, I want to be good. I want to be good in Switzerland. I want to stand up and, and talk to and, and act in love and respect. Respect doesn't always need, mean we agree on everything or we revoke our own personal belief, but we respect the person for what they believe. How can we deliver peace? And I want to be a person who delivers peace. And I want to stand up and, and call upon the leaders in Switzerland and many other countries to deliver peace among all nations' creeds and religion. But how can we? We need to have the love and peace in our heart. As it is said, out of the overflow of your heart, the mouth speaks. So I want to, interfaith dialogue is a very personal subject. That's why I want to end on that. I believe that we need to, first of all, have peace in our heart. We need to have love in our heart. Do you have love in your heart? Because what is in you will come out of you. I believe our young generation needs to replace love. Uh, we need to replace hate with love. We need to replace anger with forgiveness, indifference with compassion, greed with generosity. Personally, as a Christian, I believe God is a God of love. And uh, a, God, a love for not just one religion, not just for Christianity, but for other religions as well. And we got to be person of, people of love making a step towards each other, not being afraid of each other. And I even want to go one step further. I think people of all faiths should be an example of extending a hand to one another. We should be the first to help others. We should be the first who help others. So um, thank you very much. Well done, Daniel. A big round of applause for, the, very nice. for your time.